This is how legends are born. With all the buzz around Amazon Prime's Rings of Power and Disney Plus's House of the Dragon, I think it's fair to say that we've reached a saturation point. However, there's nothing like an overpowered transformation, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe has done more than enough to give us a comprehensive list of them. Now, we all know there are some iconic characters with legendary transformations, so it's only fair that I help you relieve some of that classic comic book nostalgia. So here's the TV region with my top 10 MCU transformations. Like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Everyone remembers Abomination, right? The super strong villain from The Incredible Hulk gave Edward Norton a serious run for his money, and I've got to give him credit for looking even more menacing than the angry green giant. Also, huge shout out to that fight scene. I'll take that over Godzilla versus Kong any day. However, She-Hulk decided to put Abomination through a progressive makeover, and while I still prefer the evil monster villain, I think that Emma Blonsky's new persona isn't as bad as the fans are making it out to be. The scene in question is when he casually transforms into Abomination right in front of his jury members, which, as you all might know, isn't the brightest idea. Just look at Jennifer Walters. She's clearly regretting being his attorney at law, isn't she? All in all, it was a funny scene with decent CGI, so I'll take it. I mean, it's a lot better than the ridiculous efforts we've seen in the trailers, right? You don't deserve this power. All right, all right, calm down. Hey, 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 take it easy, man. Kamala Khan was a much needed addition to the MCU's growing family and not just because of some diversity requirements. She's a genuine character with real aspirations and the show treats her with the kind of respect that she deserves. Miss Marvel is also an overpowered boss queen as can be seen with a heavy artillery of powers. Even so, I'm not sure if Marvel fans were so happy to see that Brie Larson appearance in the season finale. But hey, I'm just here for the transformations, right? So I'm only focusing on the moment where she activates her powers with that shiny bracelet that turns her into her superhero avatar with that rocking suit. It's a neatly directed sequence that allows Gamala to flex her new persona with the right kind of sass. <laughs> I guess women really do like jewellery, don't they? Open your eyes. You think you know the world wants. You think that this material universe is all you it's no secret that Doctor Strange was a visual spectacle and it's got a lot of legendary movies to thank for its influences. Most notably, Stanley Kubrick's 1968 sci-fi epic 2001 A Space Odyssey. Cinephiles will know exactly which scene I'm referring to and it's a bonus for the same moment to be a transformation sequence. Basically, Stephen Strange is having a hard time with his new powers so the Ancient One decides to send him on a very eventful trip across multiple dimensions. What follows is a beautifully crafted moment that makes use of CGI in the best possible way. You've got to feel a little bit bad for Benedict Cumberbatch though. First he's got to solve crimes as Sherlock Holmes, and now he's travelling across the multiverse of madness trying to escape the Scarlet Witch. Well, at least he's got a third eye now, hasn't he? So that's got to count for something, right? We don't get to choose our time. Death is what gives life meaning to know your days are numbered. Your time is short. Inhibitor. Trying to get away from me. I'm bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> I know this hasn't been the biggest success for Disney, especially with all the fans on Twitter and YouTube, but at least they can say, we have a Hulk. Seriously, the first She-Hulk transformation was a neat trick, especially because they chose to show it as a blurred reflection on the car. Yeah, I know the scene is filled with all kinds of plot holes that even the Infinity Stones couldn't correct. Also, I'm aware it's not how She-Hulk transforms for the first times in the comics either. <laughs> But we can't change what's already been done, especially when it's backed by a multi-billion dollar empire. That's right guys, you should blame Mickey Mouse for your problems, not Megan the Stallion. God, I wish I could unsee that episode. You are way more fun than my lawyer. I'd love to shoot you sometime. Dial it back. Yep, we've got Mr. Charming making his way to number six, and oh boy, this transformation was a super hit with the ladies. Steve Rogers wasn't always the bulky, handsome Avenger everyone knows and loves. At first, he was just a skinny little boy with very little strength, or even skill for that matter. But hey, all it takes is for Howard Stark to do his thing and create the super soldier serum with a mad scientist, and boom, here's Captain America with all those biceps and abs. Damn, forget Peggy Carter. Even I can take my eyes off him the first time this played in cinemas. You don't get to see the actual transformation 
transformation. But I think it's a good thing because it lets you run your imagination on what was going on inside that chamber. I'm sure Chris Evans isn't complaining either. You gonna be okay? Yeah, I just... I had a date. Listen, I know what the title says, but hear me out, okay? We're literally living through the multiverse saga, so anything's possible in phase four of the MCU, right? On a side note, Ghost Rider was also rumored to make an appearance in the multiverse of madness, but his cameo was scrapped out at the very last moment. Back to hell. What have you done? Gonna cry? So I have every right to include Hollywood's favorite madman, Nicholas freaking Cage in the mix. It all begins with a bike ride gone wrong, and then our star performer gives us an eccentric performance of screaming and laughing that will confuse you more than a Christopher Nolan film. The transformation was a very scary concept, especially when you consider that he's burning into a flaming skeleton demon while also laughing at his own pain. Well, I guess that's just the unbearable weight of massive talent, right? Get it? <laughs> that's because he acted in that movie, right? No, oh, forget it. This is how legends are born. Modern day relationships are all about control, and I don't think that's a very healthy direction unless you're an overpowered Egyptian god with a split personality. Stephen Grant and Mark Spector are essentially two sides of the same coin, but it really takes them a while to get into their comfort zones with each other. Mark is this super cool, super mean assassin with all kinds of fighting skills, whereas Stephen is, well, basically. He's just a damsel in distress. I mean, even their Moon Knight avatars are on opposite ends of the spectrum. We see their differences on the power meter when Steven must face off against some evil monster ghosts and his transformation only makes him look more ridiculous against his opponents. Luckily, that's when Mark shows up as a reflection and reminds him that he's got a lethal weapon who's just one command away. Kind of like Siri. And just like that, the real Moon Knight awakens and his five second transformation totally takes the cake. It's slick, it's smooth, and it perfectly complements the fight scene that follows. Once again, all Marvel movies and shows are canon at this point. Just look at what happened with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in Spider-Man No Way Home. Somewhere in the MCU multiverse, Bruce Banner gets triggered by some childhood memories and it awakens that beast inside him. His transformation is perfectly shot against the backdrop of an empty office building and the editing is quite nicely done here. Hulk tries to work through his confusion by smashing everything in his path till he comes across his dad. It doesn't seem like an emotional moment at first, but things go south, even faster than Zoe Kravitz after her comments on Will Smith. Yeah. I'll admit the CGI can be a little patchy during certain moments of this, but you need to understand that this movie is 19 years old. Feel old yet? <laughs> I sure do. We're about to begin bonding adamantium to weapon exoskeleton. How can I not include our very own Hugh Jackman? It doesn't seem fair, does it? After he gets beaten down by Sabretooth, Logan decides it's time for an upgrade, and who better to help you out in your time of need than an evil army man with a world domination agenda? Stryker begins a very difficult surgery on our favorite anti-hero, and oh boy, it sure doesn't look pleasant. The liquid adamantium filling up inside a hunky mutant gives him a new world of pain. It's the freaking Wolverine for crying out loud. So Logan bears through the surgery and faints for a bit, but it doesn't take long for him to come out all claws blazing in his birthday suit. I'll admit that his rort was more enjoyable than the transformation, but this scene can only be enjoyed in its essence if you watch it in its entirety. Although, I can't say the same about the X-Men franchise. If I have to come back here, I'm gonna take your head off. Disney 
Plus might be feeling the heat from the new Lord of the Rings spin-off, but at least we've got some shows like WandaVision for comfort watching. Of course, the most important transformation in that series happens when Wanda faces off against the evil witch Agatha Harkness. The odds aren't in her favor at first, but then Elizabeth Olsen realizes that she's the star of the show here, so she transforms into the Scarlet Witch after pulling off a masterful deception against her opponent. I swear, Agatha looked more bamboozled than an Instagram husky when she realized she played herself, but then again, it ain't like we were rooting for her in the first place. This was one of the few moments where the effects stood out, and I'll give credit to the VFX team for making it count when it mattered the most. I can't say the same about what happens in the Multiverse of Madness, though. And there you go, those are my top 10 MCU transformations. What do you think about that? Should I cover more volumes? Let me know in the comments and look out for my Patreon and socials in the description. All right then, I'll see you next time on the TV region.